Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the replay analysis that is this Terran versus Protoss of the Platinum variety. Today our our boy is Mr. Duo. Mr. Duo. We'll see what he's got going on. He's uh playing a nice TVP. Um yeah, we'll we'll see what his build looks like. We'll see if we can help him out. We'll see what he's doing. All right. First things first, already that's huge. Do not priority, do not prioritize throwing down that depot. Like, you can still send your first SCV to, towards your ramp, but do not prioritize that depot over making an SCV. The fact that you just stop making an SCV is very bad because it slows everything down for your build entirely. Every SCV is going to be delayed now by the, the amount of time that this SCV is delayed is going to be every SCV after this. And here's the biggest reason of all why you should never delay your SCV like this. If you make a depot a little bit later than your SCV, like, like one second later, two seconds later after your SCV arrives because you instead made another SCV right away. Your SCV is still, the SCV that's already here is in position to build the depot when it's ready to go, but you will not supply block if you still make SCVs nonstop. You won't supply block. So there is literally zero reason to cut SCVs to make a depot. So you make the depot and then you resume SCV production. Definitely don't do that. This SCV right now should honestly be uh nine sec or uh seven seconds in production it's, it's five seconds behind because an scv makes every 12 seconds and we're at second number 19 and you made your first scv so this is scv number two so 12 plus 7 is 19 so it's the total seconds of the game so you're already five seconds behind on all your workers that's a big deal now watch your supply you will not supply block by the time that depot is done like, your SCV will not even be close to popping out at 15 out of 15 when that depot's about to finish. So, definitely don't stop making SCVs. That's a humongous no-no to do that. So, notice how you're 15 out of 15. Your SCV is coming. Your SCV would be finishing right now. Your SCV would finish right now if you just never stop making them with the timing of when you took your depot. And... Because your depot also went down around 150 minerals as well. Uh, it was a little delayed. So, assuming that you made the SCV first and your, your SCV pops out right now and you're ready to make another SCV right behind this, your depot is one second from done. And boom, you would have another SCV popping out right now. So, just a, just a bit of information. Just, just, it's a big deal. Just don't stop building SCVs. Same thing right here too. I think you did it again. Get coins at rally.io. No, rally user. Thank you very much for buying coins. Remember, guys, if you're, if you're playing the Fear for All today, today's entry is 10 Vibu coin, okay? Remember, 10. It's no longer the nightlies. It's the weekly. It's 10. But much love for the for the purchase. Thank you, thank you. So let's see your SCV, okay? So you make... this is So like right here, for instance, you're at 15, right? Your SCV pops out at 41. You made a gas first. You stopped SCV production again. That was just a few. That was like three seconds or so. Four seconds of uh, no SCV. It was like three. It was like three seconds, right? But yeah, definitely want to uh, keep that SCV permanently being made the whole time. So that that is a humongous flaw in your build or order that I see already. It's just gonna slow everything you do down like hardcore. It is the priority. Okay, so you pulled off the gas to saturate your gas. That is fine. You, the fact that you went barracks then gas after shows me that it's probably going to be a build that's like Reaper Opener, which is fine. Okay, you're scouting with your SCV. That's all good. All right, I'm going to watch your command center again. So I'm just watching the command center for a second. You waited to make the gas to then make an SCV. Do you halt again for a while? Before you make the orbital, like right here, or do you? Oh no, you make another good. But do you halt here? Get coins at rally.io. Yeah. Uh, thank you for more rally coins. Much love. Uh, so I would say this. Right here is when it happens. 
This is kind of a uh, judgment call, but uh, ideally, if you if you don't fuck up your SCVs, what should have happened here is you should be honestly going up to your next SCV. You should be going up to SCV nineteen as your barracks is going to finish. Okay. Now, I would say if your barracks is like only a couple seconds from being done, like we're talking two seconds or three seconds from being done, five is kind of like gray area. If it's like one, two, or three seconds from being done, and you're like, okay, well, let's just make that orbital the second I can make the orbital, that's totally fine. But if you're like, again, five is kind of gray area, but if you're like six, it's even more in the, like, oh, shit, that's super late. Seven seconds, eight seconds out from the barracks being done, you might as well make another SCV. Five seconds is like probably the biggest gray area of them all because uh, it's almost half the production time of what an SCV is. But again, the, the, goal, the golden rule, the, the idea is as little downtime as possible on your buildings. So this is just more downtime. And but with all the downtime we've already added up, where we're now doing another five seconds on the command center to just wait for the orbital. We had uh, a few seconds when you took the gas, and we had a few seconds when you just made the depot. If you had none of this downtime, you could have easily squeezed in another CV. So that's huge. Like, that's like one SCV that's already just effectively dead, essentially. <laughs> the reason why, is if someone's like, what does that mean, Vibe? What do you mean it's like dead and nothing died this game? It's because it's like the same effect as if you made the SCV and your opponent came over here and just like killed one and then left your base because you just don't have an SCV now. So it's like it's never going to come back either because you don't get time back. Like time, uh, bless you, thank you. Time never is recovered in this game. It just it just goes away. If, you, if your build gets derailed, well, you just got to manage a derailed build at that point. So already, just off the SC the commands that are not being producing enough, you're already down by a worker off of the first saturated mineral line. And if it, think about this. What if this mineral line was at 14 instead of 13? Think about that percentage-wise out of 100. What's 13 out of 100? Or, like, what's 13 SCVs uh, representative? Like, what, what's each SCV worth percentage-wise? So if, what's, what's rather, what's 1 out of 13 percentage-wise? That's the real answer here. And then what is 1 out of 14 percentage-wise? Like, each SCV is worth a massive percent of your economy. It's, like, probably, like, 8%. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a big chunk of your economy that's just gone. Because if you had, like, 80 SCVs already, one SCV is not going to be, like, the game-changing move here. You're probably not even going to realize it's not even there because it's such a small percentage of your overall economy. But at this point, it's super noticeable. It's very big. It looks like you're scouting for a proxy void ray build, which is fine. Okay, and now we have a command center getting ready to go down. And we'll see how your build develops from here. But so far, other than the command center not kind of being mis misutilized a bit, your build looks okay. Now here's another thing again, right? So that's another few seconds uh, right there. Your orbital finishes at 151 and I think you went like two or three seconds again to make the SCV 151 all the way to 154 to make the SCV <coughs> uh, that's just like three more seconds again and also here's the other thing too that's three it's it's three seconds feels like it's not that huge of a deal but it, it adds up over and over and over and over and over and not only was the SCV after the orbital is done now delayed by three seconds the mule hasn't dropped yet either which the mule is every, if you can maximize it to be every time you have the exact 50 to throw your mule down, that's huge at uh, once again, giving you that boost of economy. It speeds everything up about your build. All your things go down at a good pace, not a delayed pace. So you drop the mule, good job. Also, here's a huge tip to you. If you can, big tip to Terry players out there. If you have the APM to do this, it's not very hard, but it's a mule tip. Try your best to, whenever you drop mules, if you drop one mule at a time, always drop it on a close mineral patch. And if you drop multiple mules at a time, drop multiple of them on multiple close patches. Try not to drop them on far patches. The reason why this is, is because if you drop them on far patches, far patches have literally 50% the minerals of a close patch. 
and you're gonna mine out those far patches really fast. So you're gonna under you're gonna have SCVs without a job to do, essentially, because you're gonna have oversaturated mineral lines if you mine out the far patches really fucking fast, and have your close patches last for a really long time. So try your best to always drop mules on the close patches. That way you can mine out close patch like and also the, the close patch is slightly more efficient too because it's closer to the net the, the command center uh but the close patches have 1800 instead of 900 minerals on them so it uh do the mules run out before the last harvest yeah no it, so th they're gonna mine like the same either way it's not like you're getting extra you're not gonna get like an extra trip because it's a close patch it's gonna be pretty much very similar it's just that the main reason like, if, if we're going to put a percentage, like, amount of, like, the importance of things, I would say, like, 5%, you get the close patch. Like, the, the mule comes back a little faster with, like, your initial turn-ins. So, like, you get the money, like, a, like half a second faster. That's, like, 5% of, like, the total importance of what it is. It's, it's pretty minor. 95% of the importance is you don't mine out patches in your base at awkward times, where it's, like, if all your far patches are supposed to mine out around 8 minutes in the game... If you drop mules on them as well, they're going to mine out in like five minutes or six minutes, like much fucking faster. And you're going to have a very lopsided economy at stages of the game where like you don't have a third base ready to go yet or you don't have a fourth base ready to go yet. So two rules about mules. Number one, always drop mules if you can at a close patch. Number two, always drop mules at the newest base you have now claimed. That way, again, you can maximize mining on bases you own already and mine out bases that are new and more exposed faster. Those are the two major rules about mules that you should try to follow. Uh, it, may, it maximizes your economy so you don't just suck a base dry super fast that's super easy to defend. Because think, think about it. If you're a Terran player and you're defending your base, you're getting attacked, right? And you're like, oh, my opponent is uh, trying to attack my third base, for instance, and you're just sucking your main base dry. Your main base is the easiest base for you to defend because it's the most it's the base you start with. It's the base that has the most SimCity involved with it. It's the furthest back on the map usually. Things like that. So try to try like obviously put a 16 workers on your main base, but maximize it as long as you can by not dropping mules in your main repeatedly over and over and over and over once you have access to new bases. I hope that concept makes sense. You, you want to suck out as much resources out of new bases as much as possible. That way, if that base ever does die, you can fall back, once again, to easier to defend bases that are just up. Uh, uh, can I add the 50 Bible price for today? Yeah, that's right. That's fine. That's all good. No worries. Okay, so you're scouting. You see double gate. You see uh, core. Also, thanks, Rob. Uh, sounds, sounds fucking amazing, man. Much love. Sorry, I'm doing a replay analysis as well. Today's super busy again. I got replay analysis coaching and then tournament about an hour after that. Uh, okay, we got a Marine coming out. Be careful with your rally, though. Do not rally this Marine all the way across the map. Reaper. So, this is plat, right? This is plat, which is fine. But the second you could, like, I mean, you saw, okay, no Nexus. Gate, gate core really fast. That's totally fine. With your Reaper, the only thing I would say that would be relevant now or important here would be... Uh, it, it could be used two ways. Two ways that could be relevant. Invibe your coin from Rally.io. Hey, Rob, thank you very much, dude. Uh, for the prize pool bump on the uh, the free tournament today. Much love, guys. Guys, check it out, too, in the, in the link. that just got linked in chat. Georgius, thank you for the... Invibe your coin from Rally.io. Thank you for the coins as well, Georgius. Guys, go check out the link. Sorry, I'm not, I don't want to say this like a hundred times during this analysis, but it's right there. Rob, I fucking love you, man. Thank you for the extra. 100. Invibe your coin from Rally.io. The co the price pool now is at 100, boys. Uh, courtesy of I'm Rob Voice in the chat. Much love to him. He's a fucking bot. He's a badass. But now, boom. Boys, 100 Vibe coin initial prize pool. And then I'll still do the five coins per person after 10. So if you're, if you're into play, if you're interested in playing, we got seven already. Uh, let me know. Like, you just donate me Vibe coin, 10 Vibe coin, and you're in, dude. You're fucking in. And uh, the links are in the chat right now. Uh, all on the title for anyone listening right now as well. Uh, in the stream title. So, Duo, if you run your Reaper into his base right now, the important thing you should be looking for with this Reaper is, number one, what units is he making out of these gateways? Is it Stalker Sentry? Is it Stalker Stalker? Is it Adept Adept? 
Is it what is what is it essentially? <laughs> and again, this is platinum, so I don't expect you to do a whole lot. So I would say this: a great way you could do this at platinum would be your first scout scouted, no nexus, double gateway and a core instead with your SCV. That was a great scout. What you should do as a response to this is 100% make a bunker in front of your base. Why should you make a bunker? You should make a bunker because you've made one marine, you've made one reaper, you're making now a reactor, you're making a expansion, you're making a factory. The point, the common denominator of all of this is that if this guy attacks you, you would die. If he runs two stalkers across the map, how do you defend that? You're going to take so much damage. If he runs two adepts across the map, how are you going to defend that? The only answer, it's, it's one answer only, and it's make a bunker. So if you have a bunker right there, that would be great against stalkers. If you have a bunker more like maybe like right here, like near the ramp and near the command center, that'd be great against adepts because that way adepts can't just farm the shit out of your depots uh, and stand right there. Uh, so... If you want to, and also again, this is platinum, so I would say you could put a bunker like right there, and it would be safe regardless. I don't think a player in platinum is going to understand how to abuse adept super well. It just doesn't usually happen. So, if your plan is to go for a marine tank, or if it's to go for swapped over re hellions with the reactor, either way, you need a bunker. Otherwise, you're going to probably die. Yeah, go ahead and ask me, Zach, and if I have a second to answer it, I'll, I'll answer it for you. <laughs> okay, so you scouted it. You saw depths. Bunker, if you, if you want to, if you want to play it perfectly, bunker here. Why, and for Terran players, they're like, why does that make sense, Vibe? Why would you want to put a bunker there? I don't get it. Please explain. Bunker here makes sense versus Stalker, because Stalker have to run up and run down, and run up and run down, and every time they try to run up the ramp, you're shooting them over and over and over. Stalkers have a lot of range as well, and if you put your bunker right here against Stalkers, they could shoot your next, or your command center from right there, and make you jump out of the bunker to try and defend it. And every time you jump out of the bunker, the stalker shoots your marines. And you're like, shit, this sucks. I'm losing marines. I don't want to be losing marines. Otherwise, I'm just letting my command center get beat on. Or stalkers might even go up here and start killing SCVs on the middle line. You don't want that. However, so that's why the bunker would go there against stalkers. However, if it's adepts, adepts can literally shade past the bunker with their little shade move. The psionic transfer that doesn't even get shot at. So they shade past the bunker with the adept standing like right there, shade all the way past the bunker into like the mineral line or back here. And they could either make you raise your depots so that he couldn't go into your base, in your main base, or he shades behind the mineral line and he starts shooting SCVs behind the mineral line. And then either way, once again, if your bunker's there, you gotta get out of the bunker. However, if your bunker is here, your Marines have an easy retreat spot to go back to, to not only shoot the adepts in the mineral line or shoot the adepts standing on the doorway. The adept range is less than a stalker. It's less than a marine in a bunker. It's much easier to handle that shit in the uh, uh, the thingy thingy. Uh, I uh, sure, Zach. That's fine. Uh, no worries. That that sounds good. Uh, remind me again later, uh, and we'll talk about it again. But yeah, that's fine. So a bunker is required either way. A bunker is required. It's just the Reaper should have told you what location to put it at. So this is wrong. He could totally shade past you because it's adepts. But here's the thing. Remember what I said? In Platinum, players still might be like, oh, bunker. Let's not mess with that. There's a bunker. I'm afraid of it. Thank you, Zach. Here's a reminder, vibe lol. So your bunker is wrong. For high, As you progress through the game, I just explained why. It is wrong if you understand why, but th again, this is plat. I'm not going to really beat you over the head of it. I'll, I'll drop it here. It's okay. I, I do 100% think that there is a very high chance your opponent will literally walk over toward the bunker and then not even shade past it and just wait. He might, but yeah, either way, it's fine <clears throat> because it's platinum. Okay, so you're making Marines and Hellions off of your reactor. So Marines make, being made off the reactor and you're making Hellions one at a time behind this. This build, we'll see how you develop it from here, but I would say this build already, if you're not going to make a tech lab, we'll see how many Hellions you make, but already. Uh, In vibe, you coin from Rally.io. Yo, Zach, thank you for the bits and the coin. Much love, dude. 
and uh, Ethril Pip. Thank you for the Viber coin. I'll be checking the ten Viber coin buy-in for the or the donation for the uh, for the event, guys. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. So he actually is smart enough to shade past your bunker. This sucks, right? This is what we were just talking about. Now you have to get out of the bunker. And you have to walk over there to fight the adepts. And now what this means is, is there's a good chance you're going to lose not only some workers, maybe even your mule, but there's also a good chance you're going to lose some of your marines. And this is painful. Now, not only talking about this, which is important, another huge thing that we're talking about too, so you're not making SCVs during this. We haven't even talked about every single second that has been missed on the command centers, but I imagine some here and there have been missed. And again, we, I don't, I don't have to beat you over the head with that either. Being like, make SCVs, because you, you, I think, I feel like you got the point that the idea is, is you never stop making SCVs when you're just doing your build. But now, don't forget, while multitasking, you really need to try your best to make SCVs while you're getting attacked, because so far you've lost a mule. You're about to lose maybe an SCV here. There goes one SCV. So one SCV has already died. The mule has died. And you're not making workers. So every single 12 seconds that goes by, it's like two workers died. And we'll actually watch this one. Okay? We'll, we'll specifically watch how long this timer is until you start making SCVs again. Okay. So it's like 320. So at 320, you stop making SCVs, right? You have one more on the main for like a few more, like three more seconds or so, but 320, we'll go with 320 because this, this command center is currently idle. Let's, oh, you made another one. Okay, good. We'll go, so your main is not making an SCV now, but at least, okay, so one of your command centers is making an SCV, one of them is not. This command center stopped making SCVs since like 324. This one's going to stop around 334, 333. Okay, so I would say already one SCV missed on the main. And now we're going with two. So we're just going to start the timer at 333. And we're going to plus one on top of it because the main base didn't make a single SCV since you made this SCV by itself. Because your SCVs were like lopsided. They were going alternating. <clears throat> okay, so now how long is it going to take you to make an SCV beyond 333? Every 12 seconds represents two SCVs. You're already down by two SCVs plus one, which is three SCVs in total. Dealing with these adepts. We'll keep going. And now they're dead. And you just killed the adepts at 349. And now I'm going to resume it. And I bet at 350, you will resume production of SCVs. So from 333 to 350, you made nothing out of either command center. And you also made nothing out of your barracks. So let's see what happens now. 350 is, I bet, when SCVs resume. They're still not resumed yet. Okay, there's one resuming. You have three SCVs on one command center now at 352. So from 333 to 352, that's 19 seconds of no production time on the natural. And the main base has not made an SCV since like 323. You're 30 seconds later in the main without even making a single worker. You still haven't even started one yet. You're somehow making SCVs off of one command center, not the other. I don't. You have three on one and zero on the other. You're still not making one. It's four minutes now. You are 40 seconds of idle time on this command center right now. 40 seconds. We're still going. Okay. You started one at like 4.06. So that's like 44 seconds or so. Ish. Of just idle time. That's almost four SCVs that you could have just freely had. So think about it like this. If this one missed one SCV or so, and this one missed, like, four. That's five more SCVs you could have right now. It's 31 SCVs in total you could have. Even though the Adepts killed one worker, you would have... And that, that's not even including the SCV you missed out on earlier as well. And we and we didn't even talk about SCVs that you might have missed beyond when you made an orbital command because we were talking about how to build a bunker. It's really just maintaining production. That's really like, the biggest thing you got to work on is maintaining production. Now, let's talk about your build and how it would make sense uh, with your timings of what you're doing. Because I see what you're doing now, which it looks like you're going to go Marine Tank Medivac. And I want to talk about your gas. So, just know, 
if your goal is to go for marine tank medevac, the only way it would make sense now to make a second gas when you make the factory would be if you're going to take a tech lab right away on this factory. It's the only way it makes sense. If instead you're going to make a reactor and you're going to make Hellions. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Yellow Bee, for the 19. Much love. 19. Lots of love. <laughs> If you're going to make a uh, yellow beam, thank you, thank you. If you're going to make a reactor uh, duo, just know that it makes no sense to take double gas right now simply because you're not going to utilize it yet. So, it, like, it, you, you have to do something with gas. So, like, if your build was to go, like, Hellions into Battlecruiser, it makes sense to take double gas. If it was to go Hellions into Banshees, it makes sense to take double gas. If your plan was to go tanks into a starport, it makes sense to go double gas. If you're doing something that costs gas really fast, it makes sense to go double gas. But if your plan was to just make a Hellion or two out of the rea out of the factory and not even make an add-on, and then only make an add-on on the barracks with a reactor, and then just make Marines out of that, you're making Marines and Hellions, which are minerals and minerals only. They both only cost minerals. And then you're eventually going to take a starport behind it. And then after you take the starport, then you make an add-on for your factory. That means that when you're getting ready to gear up into making gas costing units, you should gear up into getting more gas. The fact that you're taking extra gas when your plan is to make Hellions and Marines, neither one of those cause gas. So all that's going to do is once again, it's going to slow down your economy. It's going to prioritize your gas and under prioritize your minerals. And you're making units for now that only cost minerals. So you're going to have a gas bank that's going to develop and can't be spent yet. It's going to mean what it means is, is it means that all your things that cost minerals are going to be delayed. And the spoiler alert that everyone needs to know, everything inside StarCraft 2 costs minerals. It might cost minerals and gas, but not everything in StarCraft 2 costs gas. Only certain things cost gas. But everything costs minerals. So if you over-prioritize your gas when you don't need to, it makes everything else that you're going to do after that slower. So the only logical reason why it makes sense to rush your gas is if you were going to do a build that's like a really fast gas-based unit. But you don't even rush a gas unit. You rush Hillions. So the point I'm trying to make here is, is just don't rush your gas like this. The, the way your build should go, just a simple small alteration of your build, I would say, would be do everything you just did with the make a Reaper, make a Marine, make a Reactor, go back to making Marines. Your factory could make a Hellion or two Hellions, then make a Tech Lab while you make a Starport right after the factory. You could do all of this off of one gas. The second you start the starport, you could start a second gas. And that's around the time when you're also gonna start the tech lab. Um, or like your tech lab actually would start after that, after the starport, honestly, because you're going starport right after factory. But when your starport's in production and when your tech lab is gonna finish soon, because the tech lab is much faster than a starport, you would have a second gas getting ready to come online, which will give you a gas boost to then actually make gas units out of the tech lab on the barracks. Or sorry, out of the tech lab on the factory and out of whatever you want to do with the starport, which I imagine is going to make maybe like medevacs or you might even make a liberator first. I don't know what you're going to do. We'll, we'll find out. But uh, yeah, like just watch your gas for a second here. Look at your gas. We'll speed it up a little bit. So your second gas, because look at this. Mineraline is underutilized. It is undersaturated right now. And you're going to rip off again to saturate it. You're at 12 workers. 13. You're going to go back down to 11 probably to saturate that gas. You're down on... A, you're at almost three minutes into the game. Three minutes into the game. Really close to it. Or we'll just do exact, okay? At three minutes in the game, you're going to be at the starting worker count that you started at at zero seconds in the game. Plus one. Okay, right at three minutes, you got your final SUV. So at one second into the game, you're at 12 out of 16. And three minutes into the game, you're at 13 out of 16. So it, it's been three minutes, and you've made one SUV on the mineral line, essentially. This is not a mineral-focused build at all. I mean, I know you have two over here at your natural now. but I've, And obviously, you have other SUVs that are like finishing up jobs, finishing up a job over here. You had an SUV that was scouting a second ago. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, obviously, you've made workers. But the point is, is you're doing a ga you're doing too much shit that is not a mineral focus. 
and you're really having a hard time with your minerals right now. And again, like I said before, watch your gas. What are we doing with that gas right now? Like, this gas is getting insane right now. If you ever have a situation early on in the game where you're consistently having more gas than minerals, your build is messed up. Like, this build is just inoptimal. You can't afford to spend your gas because you can't even afford to spend your minerals. Like, you already used... Like, because here's the thing, right? To spend your gas, you need minerals to do that. But to spend your gas, which also costs minerals... You need more minerals to be able to sustain that. For instance, if I want to make a siege tank, or if I want to make a medevac, a siege tank is 125 gas. A medevac is 100 gas, which you can't see it yet, but it's 100 gas, okay? So if we wanted to make a siege tank which is a, and a medevac, which is 225 gas in total, we would need 165, or sorry, 150 minerals, and 100 also 150 minerals for the tank, 100 minerals for the medevac. So let's write these down. In total, that's 250 minerals for the uh, tank medi combo, and it's also 100 or 225 gas. Okay, so it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio of gas to minerals. It's just 25 minerals more expensive. Could we afford that? In a second, we could. Like right now, we could. We could now afford a tank and a medevac with our economy. But here's the thing: Can we also afford 100 minerals and SCVs? which is two command centers making SCVs. Could we afford two Marines out of a bunk or out of a barracks? That's another hundred minerals. So but just between command centers and barracks alone, that is 200 minerals of making units that need to also be made, be made, be made. Could we afford a depot, which is another hundred minerals? That's 300 minerals now. So this means our mineral cost realistically would, if we're going to go for a medevac really quickly with like a tank, but we're also not going to just ignore everything else we have. It would be around 550 minerals and 225 gas. The fact that you have t either tied or like on average more gas than minerals in the early game here. Because you've double gassed way too fast with the, what you're building. It just means that you can't afford shit and your buildings are always going to be idle it will feel like. Because you'll be like dude I like I can barely afford that. Now I'm waiting to afford this. Now I'm waiting to afford that. And the reason why is because your gas is just too prioritized right now. So... Again, the alteration I would make to your build would be because you're going to make Hellions, take your gas when you make the Starport, because when you take the Starport, that's when you're getting ready to make something out of the Starport, and you're also getting ready to then make something out of the factory that costs gas. That's when you raise the gas. If you do it that way, you'll have way more money, way less gas, but you'll, have, you'll still have enough gas by the time you want to make your tank and your medevac. Here's an example. You're still out from the medevac by 12 seconds, and you still haven't even started the tech lab. Okay? So you, you have a lot of time before you even want to build gas units, and you already have enough to do it. To do your build perfectly, you should have this much gas, like, as you're ready to build your units. Like, your starport should already be done when you hit, like, this much gas. And you should have a tech lab ready to go with the, with the factory. Let's see what your gas is, though, by the time it actually happens. So Medevac is done, and you have 300 gas plus in the bank. And your tech lab's still under construction. And now, you may, and now, like right here, you made the Medevac three seconds ago. So you're basically making the tank and the Medevac, which only costs 225, when you had 370 almost. Like three, more like 360, because a couple seconds has gone by. Does that make sense? Like, that's way too... That's, like, almost double what you needed. Almost. Not entirely, but almost. You're on your way to double. And all that means is, is the gas priority has been insane. And that what that does is that slows the shit out of your build. Because you're in the same exact problem you were before. Which is, I have more gas than minerals. That should never happen. And you, this is also what it does. If your build is not a two-base all-in... If you're going to make a third command center, you know what that third command center is? Remember how earlier I was like 550 minerals to 225 gas because you wanted to make the Marines, make the SCVs, make the depot. Let's add a command center into that. If you're going to do a third command center behind 111, 
Instead of 550, that's 950 minerals to 225 gas. That is a humongous mineral advantage, which is why you definitely don't want to have a situation where you're at three minutes in the game and you have 13 SCVs on the mineral line. When at minute, when it's second one into the game, you have 12. You definitely want to prioritize those minerals a bit more. And you're making Widow Mine, actually. Okay. Interesting. So, Widow Mine, even more of a reason where you don't even... Like, I would say this. What is the point of the Tech Lab if we're making Widow Mines? Your build... At this point, your build is kind of just all over the place. The only way this makes sense is if you made a really fast Armory as well. And if you were going to do that kind of a build, you would need to have made the Armory literally before you made the Medevac. Why is that important? Because if you're going to make a Tech Lab on your factory... The amount of time it takes you to not only make an armory, but also make drilling claws is a lot longer than it takes to make a starport and a medevac. So you want to do the thing that takes longer first over the thing that goes faster so it can pair together. Because what it seems like you want to go for is drilling claw widow mine drop. Which is totally fine. It's just that your build's now out of order. You should have definitely gone for a armory before making your starport. So it should, your build should go like this. And, and, and now, now, if you're going to go Armory, and you're going to go for a Drilling Claw upgrade, and you're going to go for a Medevac Widow Mine drop, now you're making shit that costs gas out of the factory. So then, it, once again, your gas would make sense. Going gas after the factory makes sense because it's not Hellions. It, or it shouldn't be Hellions. It's going to be Widow Mines. It's going to be Drilling Claws. It's going to be an Armory. It's going to be a Starport. It's going to be a Medevac. That is a lot of gas, 100 gas for the starport, 100 gas for the uh, armory, 75 gas for the drilling claw upgrade, 25 gas per widow mine, 100 gas per medevac. These are going up in the gas department again. So if that's what your plan was, makes sense to do it. But the question I would ask you is, is where is your 175 gas expense of the armory and the drilling claw upgrade? It just doesn't exist right now because you never made the armory. So if, and if you're not going to make an armory and if this is not going to be a drilling claw if it's not going to be Drilling Claw Widow Mines, I would now say this instead. If you're just going to do a quick Widow Mine drop and then stop, and from there you're going to go into just tanks or something again, you don't need an armory because you're not going for a, a heavy Widow Mine investment. It would be something more along the lines of don't even bother making a tech lab until after you've made your Widow Mines. And you could do the same thing again that you did before where you could take your, your gas as you take your starport because widow mines are cheap as fuck. You could take your gas when you take your starport. You can make like two, maybe even three widow mines out of your factory while you make your starport and then eventually make your medevac. And then when your medevac pops out, you have a couple widow mines instead of just one widow mine. And then you make your tech lab on your factory to then go into like tanks with just a really quick widow mine drop if that's what your plan was. So it's just about efficiency of time. And right now, I don't, the, the, the big thing that's lopsided here in your build is gas makes no sense how you took it because you have so much of it. And the second thing that makes no sense is I don't understand this tech lab. There is literally zero purpose for it. And all it's going to do is it's going to delay your widow mine drop if you're just going for standard widow mine drop. And you're not going for an upgraded version with, with, with drilling claws and stuff. Like now your medevac's going to sit here while you make more of them. And this is time that is precious. In a t this, like this, So this is what you would call a timing. If you're the kind of Terran who wants to open up Widow Mines against Protoss, this is a timing, and you're missing your entire timing by not doing it. Like, your medevac pops out, and you wait for, like, 25 extra seconds because you, you chose to prioritize a tech lab, which is now going to make... Because think about it. If you're going to make Cyclones after you make the Widow Mines, why don't you just make the Widow Mines, then make the tech lab, then make the Cyclone? Because then your medevac would not have had to sit there, and instead of your medevac being right here, it would be right here right now. And then you're still going to have a cyclone at the same time, either way. This, this cyclone would not be any faster or slower. It would be the exact same. Because if you're going to make, if the order of buildings goes Widow Mine, Widow Mine, or if it goes Tech Lab, Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Cyclone, so Tech Lab first, or if it goes Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Tech Lab, Cyclone, Cyclone's still the last in that list. It doesn't change the cyclone at all. But what it does change is how slow your timing is. Because now, because you've prioritized the Tech Lab, which wasn't even used, because you don't need a Tech Lab to make a Widow Mine you made this drop just super slow. Is this what you call efficiency? 100% yes. Okay, 
Guess you're going into the drop. <laughs> that drop was fine. You killed a couple probes. It's not a big deal. I the the one thing I would say about that drop is is I wouldn't want you to over micro it. So let's let's watch your production for a second. Your production's flowing right now, right? <coughs> watch this. Your medevac is currently being microed. You're currently touching it. I will not be surprised if we look at your production tab up here on the top of the screen and see it stop. Especially your SCVs. Watch this specifically. See if SCVs continue. Okay, so right now you have how many? You have one in queue on each base. You still have one in queue on each base. Let's watch. SCV. One. Zero. All production stopped as soon as you microed that. So, and look at your money. There's no reason for it to have stopped. I would say, if you're about to take an attack... At least try to like queue up a second round of units, especially if you can afford it. Queue that shit up, dude. Because not queuing it up and not making anything is. You, it feels great, right? You're like, you're tearing and you're like, yeah, I just killed like five probes. That feels fucking good. Good drop. But if you make nothing while you do the drop, it's like he does damage to you indirectly because you just. Your build just kind of stalls out for a second. And so, like, if you're both pacing. And you knock him back, and then he recovers while you stall out. You're like, guys, tie anyways. It doesn't even change anything. So it's like misleading, essentially. So make sure you don't stall your build out. Because notice, he's not aggressive. He's defensive. And look at his probes. They're still being made the whole time. So although you killed a couple probes, and he's making probes the whole time, he recovers what you just killed, and he matches you again. So in the time it would you could have built more, he replaces what died. You still aren't building anything. Neither of you are, honestly, at this point. Okay, there we go. So just, yeah, you have to really, really put an effort to make sure you're always building while you do an attack. Like, if you have to, queue up shit before you take the timing. So if you're like, this is going to take me about five seconds to do this, queue up a second round of SCVs, at least. Queue up a second round of Marines. Queue up a tank. Queue up a medevac. Like, try to go through... When you're, when you're, like, right here, ready to boost your medevac into his base, do a really quick production cycle. Like, as your medevac goes from here to there, do a production cycle. Nothing's happening to the medevac anyways. You're just staring at it at this point, being like, I gotta be ready. But nothing's happening. But if you literally just stare at the medevac and forget about this, something is happening, which is you're actually falling behind if you do nothing with your, your economy. And you, you don't even spend it. You're still not spending anything. That drop was, like, 20 seconds ago. Your medevac has literally crossed the entire map from here to here, and you haven't made a single unit other than two SCVs. That's the kind of shit that's going to fuck you over really bad. Okay, so now, at this point of the build, what you could go for would be, from here on out, all, it's, it's, much, that was, uh, but I'm not going to lie, what you just did is the hard part of Terran, okay? Add-on swapping while doing a drop in pressure is hard. What you should do now, add on a third command center, and periodically add on another command center and another command center. Add on your upgrades. So, third CC paired with upgrades, and then just go into, like, Marine Marauder and whatever units you're going to make here. Like, Marine Marauder, Medevac, Tank, or whatever. And if, as long as you can maintain production out of your buildings, you're fine. Like, see, I think these two ex extra two racks you just made are not the greatest because this now puts you into an all-in situation. This makes no sense if you want to go for a third command center because you're over-investing into barracks now. And if, you, if your plan is to, like, sit back defensively and take a third, like, we'll see, right? But this is irrelevant. You should have definitely taken a third first if your plan is to go for a third. If you're going to all-in him, this is fine. But here's the thing, too. If you're going to all-in him, if your plan is to all-in him, time is pretty important. And having a thousand minerals in your bank is... You're not really utilizing time the, the greatest. So practice as much as you can producing units while doing something else. Like always be tabbing four, five, four, five, four, five. Make units, make units, make units, make units. Just like how when you made those the two widow mines and the medevac... 
timing, like if you're going to be aggressive, every second that goes by where you could have been aggressive and you just kind of didn't do it and you just waited and you waited, it makes your timing get weaker and weaker and weaker because it allows your opponent to have more time to be more and more prepared. So you have to be timing. Time has to be pretty like efficient as much as possible. And the, the focus here should not be trying to kill a couple probes with your medevac. Like if you half ass that attack, that's fine. Like if you kill one probe, that's fine. What, what really is important with your build is making sure you're not waiting forever to build shit. Like, look at this. You're taking a fight right now, right? Look at your production. Watch your production once again. You don't build shit. No Marines are being produced. No SCVs are being produced. No Marauders are being produced. No add-ons are being produced. There we go. You just started again. After the fight's over, you have to... This is the hardest thing about teaching someone in, uh, in you know, lower leagues, in, like, plat and shit. Multitask is insanely important, and it's really hard for someone in platinum to micro and macro at the same time. It's super fucking hard. I totally get it. It's rough. But you have to do it though. If you're if you're gonna play aggressive, you have to follow these rules. If you don't follow them, you're just gonna lose. Thank you for the raid, Lambda. Much love, man. Welcome guys to the stream. Ready for dust off. <coughs> now you're pushing. And honestly, now I would say you're gonna win the game. But look at this, okay? Look at your economy. If you have a, just one second to spare, I would say you have map control. Why not just make another SCV for like a third base? Because what if you don't kill him? What if you kill his third and then he defends his natural with sky toss or whatever the fuck he's going to do? It'd be great if you fell back on a third base. And why would this make sense? Because you haven't had flawless macro as it is anyways. And you have a lot of money. So or either that or just be really a lot more consistent about spending your money on your racks and shit. Also, like, you're, you're also kind of fucking yourself over by, you're, this is, this is the hardest part to teach people. Seriously, this is the hardest part to teach people, which is you are over investing into your opponent's base and not investing enough into your own base. Just like how you have four barracks right now that have no add-ons. This is like panic racks at this point. Cause you're like, I don't have enough time to look at it. Fuck. I got to attack. I'm busy. I got to do shit. You're not making any medevacs. You're not making any tanks. You're, you queued, you made one engineering bay to queue up both upgrades. You have 22 SCVs out of 8 on the main base. And you have 11 out of 16 on the natural. Definitely could send like half of these bad boys over to here. And have a much better saturation going on. You're, you know, you're getting closer to supply blocking. If your army doesn't start taking trades and dying a little bit, you're going to supply block hardcore and your money's going to go way up again. You're focusing so much on your opponent's build, and you're not focusing enough on your own, and your build is actually falling apart because of this. The best way to attack someone, like, obviously you're attacking someone, but the best way to do it is prepare everything, and then while you're attacking, all you have to do is go five, marine, marine, marauder, 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 tank, medevac, medevac. Just, like, make your production cycle. You don't even have to look at your base to produce units. You just do it through a hotkey while you look at your army. And as soon as you make units, go back to your army again. And go from there. You don't always have to look at your base to make units, but you do have to make units while you fight somebody. That is what's called multitasking. And like I said before, if you can't even macro properly, adding in multitasking into the equation now is going to feel extremely hard. It Multitasking is the hardest thing in StarCraft 2, and you're trying to do it before you can even just macro, which is the first step of multitasking. Cluster. So just know, if you want to multitask, like I said already, I'll say it one more time. You have to macro while you attack something. So look at, watch your money right now. Let's watch your money and see if your money ever drops while you take this fight. Look at your money. It started at 540. Does it ever go down? Does anything ever get made? Watch your money. Don't look at the fight. Don't look at the fight. Look at the green box right now. Your money has not moved once. You have nothing in production other than things that were previously just waiting. You still have not spent any money. You finally... Okay. So, like, right there, what you just did, that was good. You just moved your army in, stim packed in, and you made around units really fast. You have to do that constantly. You, you Like, you did it the one time, which is great, but you have to do it, do it, do it, do it. Constantly do it. Oh, That's going to change yeah. everything for you. 
about being able to do a timing correctly. Yo. Yo, thank you very much for the sub, Dutchy. <clears throat> so your build could be a lot more efficient as we talked about. And you and if you want to be aggressive, it is doable, it is viable, but you're really, really, really gotta get in the habit of multitasking while you macro. You have to get in the habit of that. Just feel like you're micro. Feel like this, okay? It is better. This is the final piece I'll leave you with. It is better to A move stim pack somebody with an army that is 50 supply than it is to mic try to do your platinum level micro against someone with 25 supply. Does that make sense? Like you could literally have like twice the army size if your macro was more flawless. And if you did minimal micro, you don't have to do fancy things like load up all your medevacs, boost over his army, and drop into his main. And you're doing that probably because you think, what if he has a force field? Or what, what if he's guarding the ramp? But what if you didn't do that at all and you just spent all your money and your army's even bigger? Or, you know, what if you didn't seed your tank over here and try to, like, do multi-prong on this side and this side at the same time? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just it, simple micro for now would be better for you. And more focused macro, more, more uh, efficient macro would be better for you. That'd be flawless. Oh, super good. Yeah. And that, I feel like that would be a, a really good way to help you uh, progress as a player. Yo, uh, Ryland Capital, thank you for the sub. Much love. But anyways, um, Duo, I hope that helps, man. I hope what we talked about uh, helps you progress as a player. The biggest thing of all, seriously, is developing your build in a smart way and then focusing on multitasking properly. With like, So focus more on your macro, less on your micro. You'll have a better, better road ahead of you. Once you get really comfortable with your macro, once that once that develops for you overall, then you can focus little by little by little more into your micro. Anyways, uh, Duo, thank you for doing this. Much love. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well, people out there who are listening uh, for the Terran viewers. But I will see you guys in the next replay analysis. So until next time, good luck in your own games. Take it easy. I'll see you soon. Peace. See you guys.